special edition of the Chieftain Rewind. I'm your host, Robert Gambrell. This is the homecoming edition. And before we get to the game, I had a chance to talk to some players and coach, and also attended the parade and see all the festivities. Let's take a look. Gagovic is beyond excited to be a recipient on the homecoming court and excited for the big homecoming game coming up. But he says in order to keep the nerves down, they have to execute plays and just fight. Well, Warren Ma, honestly, they, uh, they kind of run the same concept we do. So they do a bunch of bubble plays, and you know they do have a lot of athletic players and a lot of really fast players. So this week we're probably going to maybe focus on a lot of like, they're going to be passing a lot, so we're going to do a lot of cover three and cover two and all that and just stay deep, so pass protection. How are you guys going to do that, though? Well, honestly, the only way we can finish plays is like mentally. Like a lot of people just got to push, and linemen has got to push, and everybody's just got to push, and you know that's how we just finish drives. You know, it's not really like a... I mean, it is, it's a mental thing and a physical thing, so like that's really it. And I just feel like if we do that, then that's it. I mean, like we're just scoring, just keep scoring, just keep going, keep driving, don't give up. Coach Marulli says he and his team are more than ready and prepared to play against Warren Mott on homecoming day. It's, it's a huge game, and, uh, um, you know, they're, they're an athletic team, and they, they uh, you know, they move the ball pretty well, and they got some speed on the outside. So, you know, we just have to be very disciplined. We have to be very disciplined on defense, and we we gotta, uh, you know, keep keep control of the ball and try to move the clock on offense. And uh, you know, I thought we 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 put some good drives together last week, so we're gonna try and build on that, and uh, you know, just stay disciplined, and play some good defense. Senior Kurt Kesson just wants to show the crowd what this team is about. I'm really hyped for it. It's, it's a big week, a big game. Uh, obviously, we're just gonna do what we do every week. Uh, hopefully, change things up a little bit and get a dub. Yeah, the whole whole family's coming out. A lot of friends. It's gonna be a a lot of people out there, environment's going to change a lot. It's going to be a fun week leading up to the game, and then right before the game, it's going to be just a uh, great game overall. Also, wouldn't it be nice to win your very first game of the season on homecoming day? Well, I mean, I hope, hopefully, you know, we're just going to push it. I mean, I'm not going to say we're going to win or lose, but I'm saying, you know, we're just going to go out there 100% and just fire at it, you know, just have a good game. It would really, really be a big thing. Uh, going to have a lot of fans out there. The uh, environment's going to change a lot. We're going to be a lot more hype, come out really strong, and uh, once again, hopefully just win that game. Yeah, it'd be huge. It'd be huge to get it at any time. And that's, you know, we're, we're working hard and the kids are working hard to uh, try and get better every week, try and get ready to battle on Friday night. And, uh, you know, this one's just uh, a little bit more exciting with the homecoming and uh, the kids are excited. They're ready to go. And, uh, you know, it's always an exciting day. Now let's fast forward to the big day, homecoming day. Before the game starts, let's check out the parade. And uh, I spoke with a few students and a teacher about what this day means for them and how this parade was a big success. Ryan from director of marketing for the student council here at Utica High School and also junior tell me how the parade went how you feeling right now good from a marketing aspect though I feel like we gave it gave it out to everyone in the community it's just good seeing everyone from the community come out everyone come and support and it's just a good community thing in such like a larger town that we all come together and about, even though this team is 0 6 on the season, you guys still, the city came out, township came out and supported you guys. Yeah, I mean, we're always here for our football team. And if it's not our football team, it's any of our sports. We'll always stand behind our players because they are, they're part of our family almost. They're all a part of the community. Members of the homecoming court, Marco and Cassie, had a blast participating in the parade. How did it feel to ride down downtown Utica in the Shelby Township? Everybody, you know, cheering you guys on. Uh, it was cool. It was my first time in the parade, so it was a nice experience. It was a great experience and throwing candy to all those kids. It was really fun. Here with Steve Haley. He's a teacher here at Utica High School. Tell me how the parade go. You ran the whole thing. I hate to say it, but it was just about perfect. The weather held, a little cloudy, none, no rain. We were good. And it kept you looking good, too, because I didn't want you to get all wet. So we pulled it off again. Pulled it off. That's a good thing. And how excited are you, um, even though the football team has been doing so well lately, how is the parade kind of uplifting to the team, oh, uplifting to the community? Actually, the parade, I think, is the biggest thing for the community. I mean, it's big for the school, but there are thousands of people out there. Maybe just hundreds, I don't know, but there's a lot of people out there. And the kids getting the candy, we're throwing candy to them. They loved it. They loved it. Even though this team is not playing so well, senior Lindsey Berg says she is still hopeful that her team will still show up and show out in their homecoming game. I don't know, you always hope. So let's hope they win, but I'm really excited. The atmosphere is great, so who cares? <laughs> let's see how your Chieftains did against Warren Mont in their big homecoming game. Let's check it out. The Utica Chieftains play host to the Warren Mont Marauders on homecoming. On the first drive of the game, Zach Keen hands it off to Christian Gegovic. 
He finds a seam and he is gone, going 79 yards to the house. The extra point was no good and Utica takes an early 6 to nothing lead. But Mott would not give Utica the satisfaction as senior quarterback Jake Doobie gives it to Darius Willis. And he goes over 70 yards to the end zone. And they complete a two point conversion to go up eight to six. Christian Gegovic again with a nice run into Mott territory. Setting up a field goal attempt that's blocked by the Marauders. Sophomore QB James Chaney comes in for Mott and he throws a bomb to Trayvon Madison, putting Warren Mott up 15 to six. On the ensuing kickoff, it's mishandled by the Utica special teams and Mott takes back possession. Jake Duby under pressure. He lobs it and it's picked off by Shane Lutz. The score would be 15 to six, Warren Mott going into halftime. Mott would explode in the third as Darius Willis dominates the Utica defense twice on two similar plays, giving him three touchdowns for the night. Zach Keen throws a complete pass to Kurt Kesson, but it's knocked out of his hands and recovered by Trayvon Madison who gets his second touchdown of the game. Mott wasn't done as Jake Duby wastes no time and takes it himself for a 30-yard touchdown run. Bringing us to our final score, Warren Mott 45, Utica 6. After the game, there were still more homecoming festivities to begin. The homecoming king and queen were crowned after the game. Here are the homecoming king and queen. Nikki and Jonathan, tell me what you guys are going through right now. What's going through your mind? Oh, just so many emotions, like excitement, fear, <laughs> everything, at, like all at once. Like every, like every nerve in my body is just shaking. <laughs> I literally don't know how to act. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen. Oh my God, I'm so thankful for everyone. What about your team? Your team, you know, they come on the field. My team, they're always there for me. They're my girlies, my babies. <laughs> They're my babies and I love them and they've been supporting every one of us and like it's just so amazing, you know what I mean? Would you like to add Jonathan? Uh, this is so surreal, thank you for everybody and all the support I've gotten, thank you so much. Aside from the loss, a lot of excitement has been going on here at Swinehart Field and throughout the whole entire day. Again, thank you for watching another edition of the Chieftain Rewind. I'm Robert Gimbrell, till next time.